This weekend was the first operational weekend for our mobile deployment uh, unit. Uh, the unit consists of 15 experienced police officers. Uh, they're local police officers, so they've all got a uh, good understanding of local policing issues and also two uh, crime issues on the Gold Coast. Uh, the unit has uh, three crews over two shifts on a 24-hour um, basis, so they're on the road uh, six, sorry, eight, uh, 16 hours a day. Um, they're mainly focused on a uh, rapid response capability uh, to address our more serious crime and also to saturation policing where we do uh, have offences occurring in a particular location. Uh, the patrols are based upon intelligence and also to um, information we get from uh, such organisations as Crime Stoppers and also to uh, information from the public from time to time. Uh, they're a support role, they uh, support our existing police and they respond to the more serious jobs, what we call our Code 1 and Code 2 jobs. They'll go in, make an initial assessment of the job and then hand it over to uh, divisional police or detectives for follow-up. Uh, at the moment we're looking at uh, high-risk offenders and we're targeting those with a view to uh, taking them off the streets as quickly as we can. We're also looking at uh, targeted traffic enforcement, uh, that is the more serious uh, traffic offences that are being committed on the Gold Coast. And uh, we're also doing quite a bit of intelligence gathering at the moment, particularly in relation to uh, OMCG members who uh, are on the Gold Coast. And the unit also to embrace the concept of uh, borderless policing, that is, it can be uh, rapidly deployed to uh, locations within the Gold Coast District, and the Gold Coast District now extends from uh, Jacobs Well down to the border uh, with New South Wales. You said 16 hours a day, is that seven days a week? Seven days a week, 16 hours a day, and so there's three crews on, which means that there's six officers in three cars. And, um, but on weekends, like we saw, you do pull That's right, on, on weekends we're working as well. There's been a bit of uh, suggestions that they're just being drawn from existing police on the coast, and you know, they, it's, it's basically just a redeployment of resources, but how do you sort of... Well, what they are, they're 15 experienced police officers who have drawn together, but they are actually being backfilled by uh, less experienced officers. Some officers, are, you know, going into their second year are replacing these officers. So uh, we've got officers on the road with plenty of experience, and of course the more junior officers, um, they're subject to training and that's occurring back at their stations. So are they technically extra police then? That's right. Since uh, about the 1st of April last year, uh, we've had an additional 60 police on the Gold Coast in terms of our allocation, so they are... Uh, new numbers in terms of, of, of an allocation. Steve, what sort of reception did they get on Friday night walking through the bikey clubhouses? Well, obviously, probably not a good reception from the bikies, but um, from our point of view, I think it was very worthwhile as an intelligence gathering exercise. Did you get anything from them, from the clubhouses? Look, I haven't had a look at the specific um, outcome of that particular operation just yet. We had a few incidents overnight. Were they involved? Did they respond to those? We had an arson at Mermaid Beach. Do you know if any of the members went to that at all? Um, what time was the arson? Uh, that was three this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. No, look, I think their latest shift on Sunday was probably four to twelve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what, what we're trying to do is to roster them during you know peak calls for service periods, and um, then during you know our quieter times of the week, which is sort of Tuesday probably through to Thursday. Sorry, Monday through to Thursday, um, they'll probably work day shift and that type of thing. What were some of the more significant things they were involved in on the weekend? Uh, okay, um, there was some uh, saturation patrols of Cooma. Uh, we did an operation up there called Operation Northern Borders. <coughs> there were saturation patrols of Broadbeach. Um, we've had some breaking enters around that area there. Um, also to uh, Coolangatta, we were doing some work down there for armed robbery offences, and also to uh, we conducted an operation called Operation Cavill and Victoria, uh, which was in the Surface Paradise area with respect to liquor enforcement. And of course there was the uh, patrols over the school holidays, holiday periods as well, and that's an operation we have called Operation Emblem. And this is sort of similar to the Operation Seymour, isn't it, but the only difference being it's permanent? That's right, yes it is. A and um, and so, so this squad will, yeah, it is, it is completely permanent, it will, it will remain in place? That's right, yes. They're actually working from this building here and they'll remain in place. And um, probably with the fluctuation, the fluctuation of time, um, they'll will increase the numbers in there. How many bikey club houses do they have? Look, I haven't got that big one, so... Yeah. Um, I'll just have a look. There were two taskings for bikies. Yep. Um, one was at uh, the southern end of the Gold Coast and one was on the, uh, the northern end of the Gold Coast. However, what I must say is that there will be um, ongoing operations with respect to bikies and they'll be looking at uh, uh, 
offences uh, committed by bikies and also to uh, clubhouses, gathering intelligence and also to um, targeted operations as it relates to bikies. I know we touched on it before, but how do you respond to claims that this is just a publicity stunt because of all the dramas we've been having lately? Well, uh, it's certainly not from my point of view. Um, it's a new unit we've set up, uh, a rapid response unit, and it's um, very effective so far. And obviously, with um, with time, we'll um, you know evaluate it, see how they go. But it's certainly not a publicity stunt, mate. No. Are they receiving any specialised training or anything different, or out of you know out of the norm that a normal? Well, they come to us with their existing operational skills training, and um, you know an orientation was conducted here in terms of their um, tasks and duties, and from here they'll uh, go about doing their job. But there's been no specific training at this point in time. It's general duties police who have a particular interest in, um, I guess, rapid response policing and also to who are particularly, uh, I guess, productive in terms of their, their work output. So they were chosen uh, for this specific purpose based upon their skills base, based upon their knowledge of local policing issues on the Gold Coast and based upon their work ethic and also to their integrity as well. In relation to something like bikies that they would be handling, is there not some benefit to giving them some guidance or some... Well, they're working with our intelligence cells, mm -hmm. so the intelligence cells feed that information into this particular unit and then they respond and act upon that intelligence. Can you say which bike your clubhouse are they actually linked to or which gangs? Look, I'd rather not specify the, the particular gangs if that's okay, but we are certainly uh, focusing on bikers at the moment. So it's basically uh, cooks being put on notice for this new squad that they Well, want. certainly. And also, too, we'll be looking at uh, people who are wanted on return to prison warrants and also, too, people who are absconding on bail, the more serious offenders in that regard as well. And how crucial is it just to have that visibility? Do you think that that does deter a lot of things, just seeing... That's, well, it's very important that it acts as a deterrent and it also, too, uh, hopefully reassures the public that the police are out there doing their job and focusing on the people that need to be focused upon. Do they have to have a minimum um, amount of experience to get in? Yeah. Well, most of them are senior constables, so they could have anywhere between uh, 7 and uh, 15 to 20 years service. Uh, some of them are police officers who've been in other police services elsewhere, so they bring those skills with them. Uh, some of them had to have had detective training, but generally they've got a uh, very sound background in uh, operational uniform policing on the Gold Coast here, which makes them uh, uh, certainly an asset to a unit like this. They responded to um, reports of an assault at Chugan on Saturday night. Can you tell us anything about that? Look, well, I don't have the specifics in relation to that, but we have been um, conducting operations down there in relation to a number of assaults, and we're getting some very good information so far in relation to that, um, th those particular assaults anyway, and, and we've been working in association with the New South Wales Police on that particular job. In a best-case scenario, what can you hope that they uh, will help to achieve? Can, can you give us any statistics or figures of... Well, I, obviously I, I can't sort of make any projections at this point in time, but just to give you an example, over the, um, the weekend there were four people arrested on five charges. Um, a warrant was executed, uh, drink drivers were apprehended, uh, 31 traffic tickets were issued, there were 160-odd street checks, um, that is speaking to people who uh, are behaving in a disruptive way. Um, they handed over uh, drink drivers, um, they've apprehended a couple of uh, property offenders and also to a uh, reportable offender, that is an offender who's um, wanted on, on bail. Uh, they also provided assistance to um, police within the divisions in relation to suicides. Uh, there were two mental health interventions. Uh, they attended three disturbances. Uh, first response to three domestic violence related incidents. Uh, there were two traffic crashes move on direction and a, uh, a search warrant as well. And probably one of the most notable things uh, was on the 4th of July when they actually detained uh, some suspects for um, offences down at uh, Royal Beach Waters and those persons were interviewed in relation to uh, breaking into offences down there. Is this based on a certain model where um, increased police force has proven to bring rates down or is it something that's, where, where is the initiative sprung from? Well, the initiative has sprung from within the district here and uh, also to, you know, at a regional level and it's all part of the, uh, I guess, the new organisational structure within the QPS to put more police uh, back on the road. And based on... It's based, it's, on it's, based, it's based upon past intelligence and also to uh, what we see as being needed in the community to address some of the, uh, the key crime issues out there. 
it's a bit annoying that um, you know you, you try and do something like set up a unit like this and you got a bit of criticism from different people like the police union and so forth. <laughs> Look, it's uh, obviously we're going to get criticism from time to time, but I guess that comes with the uh, with the territory, and um, we're, we're doing the best we can with uh, with what we've got. What would be your message to to the bikey gangs and, and to the you know the people doing these offences now that we've got this new squad in place? We'll get you. <laughs> I'm just thinking of something. Yeah. Um, I'd say uh, be on your very best behaviour, and uh, if you intend to commit crime on the Gold Coast, you certainly will be caught, and you're being watched very carefully, and uh, you're being profiled. Uh, we're building up with profiles on people and we're certainly going to act against them if they're breaching the law.